Hi. Now, in this last part, we're told that immediately after C strikes R, the particles have equal speeds but move in opposite directions. And what we've got to do is to find the speed of C immediately after it strikes R. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done it already, as usual, just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back. If you had a go, let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, what I'm going to want to do is to draw the two particles just before they collide. I've got a before situation and then an after situation. So we know that before impact with C, R is stationary. So I'll just put an arrow here with a zero over the top, OK? Zero meters per second. And we've got to find out, first of all, before we can find the speeds after impact, we've got to find the speed of C before it just hits R. I know that when they hit one another, we're told that they have equal speeds but move in opposite directions. So this is going to have to go in that direction and C is going to have to go in that direction. Let's say that we call that final velocity just V. So we've got a V there and a V there. So we need to get this initial speed of C just before it hits R. So to do that, we know that the equation for the velocity v is given by v with a subscript 0 minus 3t squared. v subscript 0 we worked out to be 3.1. So all we need to do is let t equal 0 0.3 and it will give us the speed that c hits r. So that's our starting point then. So if we just come over here and we'll just say that when t equals 0 0.3. So v equals v subscript 0, which we found out was 3.1. And then from this, we've got to subtract 3t squared. And t is 0 0.3, so it's going to be 3 times 0 0.3 squared. And if you work this out, you end up with 2.83 meters per second. So we can update our diagram now, OK, with the fact that C just hits R when it's moving at 2.83 meters per second. So to do this next stage, we just need to apply the conservation of linear momentum. So I'll just put that up here, the conservation of lin OK, momentum, just so hopefully the reader can get some idea of what we're doing. And again, we're dealing with vector quantities, so we need to set up a positive sense. And I'm going to set up the positive sense to the left, OK, so that the speed of C will be in a positive sense. But it's up to you which way you go. As long as you stick to your sense, it will work out in the end. So what have we got then? We've got the momentum before impact equals the momentum after. So momentum before impact, let's start with C. Its mass is going to be 0 0.5. Its velocity before is in the negative sense to what I've got here. So it's going to be minus 2.83. Minus 2.83 then. And to this we add the momentum of R. Well, that's going to be just 1.5 times 0. So there is no momentum there. So we don't need this, so we can just rub that out. And it's equal to the momentum after impact. So we've got C, which is 0.5 for the mass, times its velocity. Well, that's going to be V. It's in the positive sense, so we've got that as V. And then to this, we add the momentum of R. So it's going to be its mass, which is 1.5, times its velocity, V, which is in the negative sense to what we've got here. So that's going to be multiplied by minus V. 
So working this out, the left hand side comes to minus 1.415. And this is going to be equal to 0.5v minus 1.5v, so it's going to be minus v. So we can see that v equals 1.415. And that's going to be the speed of c. Okay? And that will be measured in meters per second. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this problem. And if you got it right, excellent. Well done.